Welcome to Five Start Weekly. We talk new players, new preseason, and catch you up on all the new new from the offseason. Welcome to the show, Five Shark fam. I'm AJ, and this is Mark. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. The boys are back like D2 Mighty Ducks. The preseason has begun. And yes, Wednesday, the squad was in full training. You saw the likes of Gabriel Hainse in action, our new gaffer. You saw the likes of Joseph Martinez, Ezekiel Barco, Marcelino Moreno as well, who, by the way, got a new haircut, which is very Miggy-like, if you noticed, mm-hmm. Mark. But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Pulisic might want to get his number, his barber's number. Yeah, I think it's, it's just his wife. So uh, if I uh, <laughs> saw well enough from the IG story that, uh, yeah, she cut it. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer because, yeah, I mean, his, uh, his poof or his, his uh, I don't know, whatever you call it, was pretty epic. I mean, I think the envy of a lot of uh, people that's maybe – uh, lack in the hair department or something, but uh, <laughs> at least that's from what I've seen on social media. But uh, yeah, definitely great to see the boys back in training in preseason. It almost feels like something's happening, right? Oh yeah, I mean, like you can see the uh, the excitement uh, with the with the fan base. You know, I've seen a couple memes, really quality stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just like difference between 2020 and 2021. Uh, I forget. Oh, no. I'm going to forget his name. But the, the Nintendo one, perfect. Mm-hmm. Blow the cartridge. Put it back in there. Let's go again. Yeah. So. Alex Passan, I believe. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Well done to uh, him on Twitter on that post. Uh, very, very hilarious. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also, yeah, you know, a former captain of Atlanta United is posting on Twitter as well about preseason, but not what you expect. Uh, Michael Parkhurst, yeah, uh, he's he tweeted out, "Got to hit the sack early tonight." Exhausted from just thinking about preseason, which uh, of course he has retired, and uh, I assume is why he retired in the first place because this grind. That uh, you know, that preseason grind is one of the hardest things. Going from mm-hmm. zero to essentially maybe like 50, 60 percent is uh, right. one of the hardest things to do. Uh, and so definitely he was uh, feeling it mentally. But uh, <laughs> and yeah. to be fair, yeah, when I think about all that running, I'm yeah, I'm exhausted too because it's just like, geez, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like the thing is like the games are still fun. Like if it was just the games, you know, people might play as as long as they could until they're until well into their 40s but Mm -hmm. man when you got to come in early in the year and yeah the whole you know gearing up into into shape and all that and you know it's tough tough, yeah waking up at 6 a.m probably for right you know all those morning trainings and then you gotta work out days or whatever the hell they do yeah exactly right it's uh it's brutal but you know it gets them ready for the season at least uh yeah kind of uh, rudimentarily, I think, um, because, mm-hmm. or rudimentally, I, that's, yeah, I just made up a word there, but, um, yeah, definitely, you know, the lack of the actual preseason matches is going to be, you know, uh, a big issue going into those CCL matches, which, so the yeah. dates of those CCL matches have been revealed. It'll be April 6th and April 13th. The first leg will be at Estadio Alejandro Moreno Soto in Alajuela, Costa Rica. Uh, and that will kick off at 8 p.m. And then the second leg will be hosted at our favorite sister venue. Uh, I say that in jest a little bit, but uh, Fifth Third Bank Stadium, of course, in Kennesaw. And that will be at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, yeah, you know, definitely we... I have a pretty good record at 5th Third Bank Stadium, but yeah, those those early matches in the season in Costa Rica, okay, yeah, hopefully we do a little bit better than uh, we have, you know, but what are your thoughts, uh, you know, on those dates without 
the friendlies to ramp up towards that. Uh, you know, at least there's a week, you know, in between those, which is customary. But you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit going to be a difficult kind of matchup, especially like we said, a la Hualense are in good form. Yeah, I think this is as difficult uh, a start as um, as you can you know present a team. Because if it was like they were starting in MLS play, they'd be starting against other teams who are in the same boat. And so you kind of figure those, you know, the matchups would be more fair in the sense that they're both teams are kind of in the same place. Um, but here you are t facing a team that's in midseason, will be in midseason form essentially, and in good form. So um, they just got to survive that first leg. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, I think it would be. Uh, I don't want to call it a miracle, but it will take a Herculean effort to get to come out of there with a result. I really think so. So um, I think with Just that game, a result? The, wow. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, so not it's even a be, draw. I, uh. it, really ask, you know, just asking these players without yeah. any real match play to then go to Costa Rica and like put in a performance, you know, and then like, especially for someone like Ense who has a specific system. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's gonna be an uphill battle. Like I'd be I'd be very pleased they come out of there with a draw, yeah. and then you know you have that you at least you at least have that ninety minutes under your belt. You know hopefully there's no uh, injuries, but you know I don't obviously you don't even want to talk about that into existence. Nope, nope. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then like and you know the week of training ramping up to the second like then I, I feel like that would give Atlanta United an advantage, especially not having to travel. So. Um, yeah, I mean that's how I feel about it. It's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I just, I just think uh, I mean, United fans should be open minded, prepared for anything because this is not a normal situation. Yeah, and speaking of not a normal situation, uh, according to Doug Roberson of the AJC, that uh, he said that it might be mid March before the MLS schedule could come out, uh, and that was on Wednesday. So very interesting indeed. That uh, yeah, I mean we won't really find out for a few weeks. That, uh, you know, when those games are going to be happening for the 2021 MLS season, that, of course, uh, there's a lot of interested parties because a lot of people, uh, maybe if the pandemic gets a little bit better or people get vaccinated, then, uh, yeah, you know, some away days can be planned. People are eagerly awaiting those dates to be announced. But uh, anyway, let's uh, move on to some players being officially announced and long rumored Ronald Hernandez of Aberdeen FC has officially joined Atlanta United on loan for the season. And uh, yeah, he's a 23 year old Venezuelan right back. And Carlos Bocanegra said that he's a young, talented defender, and we're pleased to add him to our roster. Like many international players, he had to endure difficult circumstances over the last year, and we're eager to give him an opportunity to compete in a new environment. Yeah, he did have to go uh, kind of early back to Venezuela on kind of a, um, you know, uh, not bereavement leave, but pretty much essentially where he had to uh, go back for kind of compassionate leave is the word yes and um, yes he is uh, fairly fairly experienced internationally as well a teammate of Jose Martinez on the Venezuelan national team has played against the likes of Argentina as well against the likes of Messi so you know it's uh, he's no slouch in that department in terms of uh, some of that experience he didn't have the best spell with uh, Aberdeen in his first season there uh, wasn't really favored kind of not really uh, matching their style of play it seems but uh, you know a guy that definitely has uh, some qualities going forward and backwards uh, definitely as a playmaker uh, likes to play that short ball can cross it at times uh, with good effect um, you know can beat his man and he's good at tracking back and putting in a tackle so, you know, definitely a guy that uh, we, yeah, needed in the case when uh, Franco Escobar was sent out on loan to Newell's Old Boys. But, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on this officially becoming a thing? Yeah, I mean, he, uh, you know, he probably won't be 
might not get as much attention as the other signings that Atlanta United make this offseason, but uh, he has an important role, just the fact that he's a fullback, you know? I think especially for a uh, manager like Ense, the fullback role will be important in terms of what they bring to the team. And you got to figure it's not going to be just about defending, but it's going to be like what they contribute to the midfield play or, you know, how they get forward, if, you know, if they're going to be asked to overlap. Uh, so, you know, we know we're pretty much set at left back, you know, like Bello is coming off a good season and we hope uh, he builds on that. Um, but a right back, I think, you know, okay, we brought in Ronald Hernandez, Brooks Lennon can play right back. It's not his natural position. So I think uh, we'll see some competition there is what I feel. Um, but, you know, I, I'm curious. I hope he does well. You know, it, it uh, he has, he's going to be coming in with a chip on his shoulder because as you said, uh, didn't have the best time at Aberdeen. So, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully Ansi can get the best out of him. Yeah. And a lot of Aberdeen fans were upset at Dave uh, Cormack, the, uh, the new president of Aberdeen FC. And so, uh, for her pretty much sanctioning this move they're you know he's on a five-year deal essentially they're really questioning why you know a guy that they deem pretty high on uh, is moved to their sister club and so obviously it's uh yeah it does raise some questions but I think you know from a little bit of what we know from Ronald Hernandez so far, he looks like a guy that has a lot of promise that he could fulfill. Still very young. Uh, and so, you know, that difference in age with Hernandez versus Escobar, you know, we get something that's uh, something we can build on even more, um, even though he might not be as versatile as, say, Escobar. But definitely Hernandez was very excited and posted on social media. And he said, uh, from today begins a new phase in my career that makes me very happy and enthusiastic. Getting to a club as important and, as, and uh, enormous structures as Atlanta United. This is, of course, uh, translated a little bit probably. Uh, or maybe he had someone else kind of ghostwrite it a little bit with him. Uh, a place where there is already another Venezuelan, Jose Martinez, who has opened doors and achieved transcendent achievements here. A charming city like Atlanta and to the MLS, a league that is constantly growing. They represent for me big and special challenges. I thank the club for trusting me to God who always accompanies me with my family. And he mentions uh, his family and to Agency Sika Sports for making this possible from the management and good relations with the institution. God uh, through. See you soon at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So, yes, he's clearly stoked. And, uh, you know, as are all we uh, about this season. And so, uh, yeah. Very, very good to see a player, you know, excited about coming in. Uh, but, uh, yeah, another player also was announced. And Darren Eels' uh, yeah, cryptic tweet game has taken itself to another level. And, uh, yeah, kind of just way over the top of this one, but I'm here for it. And uh, this one, full-on video where he's in his study He's got a pipe. He's got a book where he's reading some prose. And uh, yeah, he pretty much reads If by Rudyard Kipling. And he reads it backwards. And when that's read backwards, it was the initials F-I. And that stood for Franco Ibarra. And so, oh yeah. Oh, my God. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Way over the heads of many, I'm sure, but wow, you know, the depths of this is uh, to be applauded for sure. And uh, yeah. anyway, Franco Ibarra. How much time do you think he spends yeah. at night thinking up this shit? <laughs> it's probably all night. He probably keeps yeah. himself up and he's probably giddy with excitement telling the digital team like, this is my oh, idea. God. Guys, uh, yeah, come over, you know, set up all the equipment, set up the lights. Uh, just turn the camera on and here we go. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Franco Ibarra, 19-year-old midfielder who, yes, uh, looks a little bit uh, kind of a hybrid of a defensive midfielder and a box-to-box -box player, uh, comes from Argentino's juniors, is a guy that is full of energy, Looks like a guy that uh, is willing to join in on the attack as well. Uh, He's not maybe quite a guy that's going to keep things ticking, maybe like a Santiago Sosa, but he's definitely more of a risk taker, definitely more of a guy that's going to try to pass it forward. 
He has a yellow card in him. I believe he has six in ten games for Argentino Juniors. Uh, very inexperienced, but a very promising talent at 19. And also, he will not be a U22 Young Money signing. So, uh, you know, that's also very key here in that uh, it gives us flexibility to sign that third one uh, that will be coming in at some point. Uh, maybe if uh, it's during the summer or, you know, if we uh, have another rumor before the season starts. But, yeah, I suspect that uh, the team... Yeah, might be seeing what they got, and then they'll maybe go with it. But they will not be like not using a U22 spot. That's for sure. That's uh, they will be taking every <laughs> single advantage possible for sure. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. I mean, all that being said, what are your thoughts on Franco Ibarra being official? Yeah, this is an interesting one. What it, it reminds me of uh, these European teams sort of scouting MLS. And uh, we've seen now a couple of examples where these young players kind of break through, maybe have a season in them about sometimes in, in some cases less. And then they're, you know, they're being scooped up by these European clubs. I think Elaine and I kind of made that move in terms of uh, similarities. That, that's that's what this reminds me of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like he like uh, Bocanegra said, he only just broke through in November. And so, you know, obviously they they've seen something that they like, you know. Um, and perhaps they've done uh, their research a little bit on uh, on how uh, Argentino juniors uh, rated him, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I think it, it's exciting, you know, because like with the other move, right, with the Sosa move, mm -hmm. uh, you're now looking at this midfield and it's stacked. <laughs> they've got options, they've got depth in theory, uh, and so yeah, you got young I'm, and I mean, uh, a little bit experienced uh, and you know kind of young right. experienced type of players of course right. uh with emerson hyman with mo adams uh mm -hmm. you know in the fray as exactly. well and so you know there's definitely some choices that hainsay can make here and mm -hmm. you know go with really young and very promising or a little bit of experience we uh we have options in the many competitions that we will be in exactly so you know it's gonna yeah. be good uh i, I suspect think... yeah go ahead no, just real quick. I just think I think the top teams have competitions within the squad. You know, like I think that's how you get the best eleven uh, that produces at a high level from week to week. Right, and of course, a lot of people are not super high on Emerson Hyman and whatnot, but he does have his uses. He is useful at driving the ball forward, uh, when, especially if he can play one twos. Uh, and then driving into the box where, you know, those late man runs and all that type of stuff. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's maybe not the the guy that will keep keep it clicking like a metronome or is as press resistant as a Nagby, but he, again, has his uses. Um, but, anyway, another player that isn't official but is pretty much nearly done, according to Cesar Luis Merlo and Felipe Cardenas, who has a couple sources with the team, apparently, that uh, have confirmed it. And it's just pending some final paperwork. But, uh, yes, Lataro Giannetti of Belez Sarsfield, of course, of Gabriel Hainsey's former team. Uh, he is a right-sided center back or a right-footed center back as well. And, uh, yes, we have acquired, apparently... 100% of his players' rights. Uh, fee has not been disclosed, but uh, it looks to be, yeah, pretty low in the around the $3 million uh, mark. But, uh, yeah, he was holding out on uh, Velez Sarsfield's uh, training in the hopes of making this move, and which is always interesting when it's the captain of the squad. Uh, that's shades of Laurent Koscielny of Arsenal uh, when he left. Maybe not the best look always, but uh, you know I'm I'm kind of used to that with Arsenal's captains <laughs> leaving. That's not exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a sore spot for me a little bit, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, nonetheless, Giannetti, a guy that's uh, yeah pretty tidy with the ball, uh, decent in the air. And a guy that can spread it around. And, uh, yeah, only 27 years old. And apparently it's a five-year deal. But there are a few little things uh, in his injury history. He has uh, an ACL injury in the past. That was in 2017. 
Uh, but recently, he did play 21 of 23 games in the 1920 season. And yeah, he's only been listed out as long as a month or longer than a month. Uh, yeah, once. And so since the 2017 ACL injury. So it's not uh, maybe going to, you know, return like a lot of uh, people might fear. Hopefully, hopefully not. There is, of course, that reoccurrence possibility uh, with maybe the other uh, knee, and that's something that you know we'll have to look out for with Giannetti and also, of course, Rosa Martinez. It's kind of what happens yeah. with ACL injuries. It's you know you gotta you gotta kind of uh, you know maybe plan that there's a apparently uh, a twenty percent chance that this could happen. Uh, that's according to FlashScore.com. But anyway, mm -hmm. Giannetti. You know, your thoughts on this guy and him potentially coming in. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to go off because, you know, I haven't seen him play, but definitely uh, people who've watched him play are uh, excited about him. His Certainly his ball playing ability. I think also he brings in good experience at 27 years old. Um, you know, and so he's in his prime and a great partner for Miles Robinson. I think that's probably the biggest upside of this move. Um, and so, you know, it was just center back. It was, you, they had to address uh, one of the starting center back positions. It appears that they have done that. And so now you feel a lot better about the back line. I mean, like, obviously, you know, I mentioned earlier, yes, there's a little bit of a question mark at right back. But uh, it looks like you have at least three of the four starters nailed on. And then all the, you know, the depth that you have can fill in um, where, when they need to. And so, yeah, I'm excited to see him. Um, you know, it's uh, I'm excited to see the his role in into his system mm -hmm. um, especially because he's familiar with the system is so key. exactly mm -hmm. so, exactly yeah, that's gonna and, be and you know mm -hmm. and you and i love ball playing center box like, you know like the guy who just like hits those diagonals i mean that's just you know that's like definitely definitely it's like a good appetizer for a great meal you know so right uh, indeed indeed <laughs> yeah especially if uh yeah it ends on the foot of a winger and he can either you know dribble into the box or put a cross in and joseph can score then yes we're all here for that for sure but uh yeah speaking of a winger darren mateos uh let's have an update on him uh well yes apparently the venezuelan winger has uh reported received his visa with no problems that's according to chris smith uh, and he could travel to Atlanta to complete the deal as early as Sunday, but that was last Sunday. And so, you know, it's possible that this week he could be, uh, yeah, maybe announced, but he might be an Atlanta United 2 player more primarily. But it does seem like Hainze and Atlanta United are high on him, according to Smith. And yes, uh, you know, it'll be... Uh, good to to bring a guy in that is one of those tricky wingers, likes to dribble at players, likes to beat a man, and uh, if he can really get his uh, his bearings underneath him at the twos, then uh, who knows? He might be able to get some uh, you know some kind of looks in some of the you know maybe latter stages of matches if uh, you know he does really impress at the twos, but. As for now, he's probably more primarily going to be in our reserve squad. But, uh, of course, yeah, uh, you know, we talked about Fernando Mesa last week, I believe. But this, uh, yeah, it was official this week. And, yes, he has joined Defensa e Justicia. And, yes, uh, you know, there is the loan until June 30th, which is very interesting, and with the chances of extending it to December 31st. Which is, uh, yeah, you know, kind of interesting if he does return, what happens there. And uh, so he would have to impress to stay at Defensa. But I believe it's probably in this case where uh, we were talking to Defensa about Hector David Martinez. And so Mesa being a guy that we were trying to offload slightly, uh, yeah, is the guy that goes the other direction in that case. So that's probably why we had pretty much opened the lines of communication, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it allows us to move a guy on that we maybe were trying to, you know, kind of move on anyway. So, yeah, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, that gets us to 
the roster check going into preseason so far. Uh, of course, Giannetti is not on that list quite yet, but uh, we will pretty much assume that he is. Uh, and you'll see on screen pretty much who our, uh, our squad is at the moment uh, going in. And so, you know, 10 defenders, uh, 11 midfielders, 5 forwards. Uh, we only have two really, uh, like, first team goalkeepers so far. Uh, Brendan Moore is not part of that. Of course, we let him go. And so, uh, will it be one of the, you know, reserve squad goalkeepers that is the guy that, you know, becomes our third goalkeeper if Alec can or, you know, God forbid, Raguzan cannot uh, play? You know, there will mm -hmm. be some uh rotation during the year of course in that regard but definitely uh it's looking pretty decent we got some uh some you know different types of players some dynamic within the roster uh definitely looks more promising than last year so you know i think there's like what we have to do here is project some lineups for sure and get to some uh, predicted starting 11s of what we could put out there. And, uh, yeah, Mark, let me know what you think could uh, could transpire from Gabriel Hainsey's lineup, which could be fairly fluid. Let's kind of note that, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, he isn't too worried about the, uh, you know, kind of system or lineup. It's more about the kind of fluidity of play and the players within that system. So, but... With that being said, what do you got? Yeah, I just, uh, let's take a moment to appreciate doing this. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. This is going to be fun. The yeah. options that we have, you know, it's it's going to, we, it should be better than last season. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think 4 3 3 is what uh, most people are expecting from the outset. Uh, and like, as you said, it's fluid. So, you know, it's not like they're going to stay in that shape for a whole 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, I think that's a simple base to go off of. And so for the back four, uh, I think we'll project Hernandez in there. Uh, certainly, uh, Giannetti, Robinson, and Bello, you figure are going to, uh, lock down the other three spots for yeah. the midfield three. Uh, before you go on, I think Robinson for me is going to play that left center back role because Giannetti mm -hmm. is a little bit more primarily, it seems, uh, by his heat maps, more of a right sided player. And Miles Robinson, uh, while maybe, yes, not uh, maybe as adept, maybe as Giannetti uh, in terms of, you know, on the ball play, he still has played as a left center back before and uh, has played that, I believe, for the U.S. men's national team as well. And so there are some, some instances where uh, he has played that. And so uh, for me, yeah, Robinson makes sense there as more of the left center back and instead of kind of unsettling a new guy coming in you know so anyway move on yeah uh and then so for the midfield three i think we'll see uh sosa more playing the six i actually think ibarra has uh there's a good chance that we'll see him start um and then moreno is sort of that uh that eight kind of player mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think that, that I'm very excited about that midfield if we get that, you know, like mm -hmm. the the combination of quality and energy. Um, yeah, it's, it should be a lot of fun. And then for my wingers, so I think right wing is going to be interesting, but mm -hmm. I think Dom is going to be is going to be the one who uh, wins the job at the start. Um, and I think we saw good moments from him last year. We saw the athleticism, uh, you know, towards the end, we saw him like get more comfortable taking players on. Um, you know, if he is not able to go though, cause, uh, you know, as you've mentioned before, his injury history, uh, is a bit of a concern. Um, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what they do with that but let, you know for the 433 let's say Dom plays and then I have Barco on the left and Joseph up top yeah uh I agree with that uh yeah Moreno kind of as that kind of roving aid also as uh Ibarra kind of uh maybe a little bit of the hybrid maybe you know slotting in as uh one of the double pivots as well if needed uh depending on and I think in attack when you have you know maybe you 
both fullbacks going forward and then Sosa maybe splitting the center backs, uh, we would have a large number of players kind of joining the attack. And that would really, I think, uh, on the overloads, on uh, you know the numerical superi superiority on the pitch, um, you know, in certain spaces will be super key. Uh, yeah, Dom, of course, yeah, like you said, you know, probably is the favorite at right wing. Uh, and, you know, Lennon could play a part there or, you know, he could play backwards as, uh, you know, with Hernandez or not with Hernandez, but over Hernandez if uh, at times if he can show that he's a better option. Uh, but, you know, Eric Lopez also could come into play here as well as he was very promising in the CCL match. And he could maybe play left wing, right wing at the 10 in which he played at the CCL match. So we have a lot of flexibility, which is really, really good here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, another shape that uh, Hainze has been known to play is a 3-3-3-1, three, 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 uh, which, uh, yeah, is bananas, of course, to kind of look at. But, uh, yeah, you know, up here, uh, looking at it, you know, for me, I think Giannetti, Robinson as that sweeper, and walks maybe would join in as one of those center backs, uh, and then you know if it's not Hernandez, maybe Lennon would be that right uh, wing back, and Bello would be that left wing back. Sosa, I think, would be in the midfield, uh, but yeah, just slightly forward in front of him a little bit, but uh, still hard working. I think would be Moreno, Lopez, uh, Eric Lopez rather, and uh, Barco maybe would be kind of floating within that that area not really uh having too much defensive responsibility probably and then of course joseph up top and then you know god forbid if he uh yeah has a setback then licha lopez definitely you know is that experienced striker that can really i think spell joseph martinez in the many times that um you know he might need it in this season coming back from acl surgery which is gonna be key uh, and yeah, just all the oozing of experience that Licha Lopez will be uh, giving his fellow teammates. I think I'm looking forward to that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what do you think of that one? Do you have any changes to make on that? Um, no, I don't think I do, to be honest, because I do think, uh, especially with the back three, I think walks does make sense in that situation. Um, and then Lennon, I think, would be a good option at right wing back. So, uh, yeah, there's not too much I would change. And I do think that's an excellent point about Joseph. I think that we shouldn't expect, you know, considering all competitions, um, including, you know, whatever, assuming that we're in the Open Cup. I don't think that's been announced yet. And uh, uh, certainly CCL, you know, I wouldn't expect Joseph to play more than 30 games. You know, like just that first season back from an ACL injury. Uh, they do have to be careful with him a, a bit. So... Definitely expect to see a lot of uh, Licha Lopez this season. Yeah, and especially, yeah, uh, I kind of tweeted this out on my personal Twitter, but essentially uh, players coming back from ACL injuries, you, you shouldn't put all your eggs into the basket. Uh, there is a lot of um, a lack of trust into their, their actual like leg when they actually get back that they may not you know, they might be favoring it a little bit, and that's when some of the injuries occur. Uh, you know, s small setbacks, hopefully not big setbacks, uh, where people have uh, suffered, you know, injuries to their other leg because of kind of favoring one side over the other. So, uh, you know, I mentioned the, the documentary by Hector Bellerin and Arsenal where it's pretty much his road to recovery from an ACL injury and I think it's very very good perspective on how difficult a road it's going to be like his best is probably going to be very likely next year and mm -hmm. you know for us to expect a you know guns blazing Jose Martinez yeah I, I think we need to temper those expectations for sure but <coughs> excuse me anyway uh let's move on from that then uh Let's look at uh, Mateo Sosetsu is wearing some sort of mysterious training top. It could just be a t-shirt. Who knows? But uh, yeah, when we posted that, everyone could only fixate on their teeth, <laughs> on those <laughs> chompers, 
because <laughs> Mateo Sosetsu and Ezekiel Barco have gleaming white, pearly whites. And uh, yeah, there was an apt Twitter comment by ATL UCD aficionado who tweeted, did Hosetu go to Firmino's dental? Uh, that, of course, being uh, Roberto Firmino of uh, Liverpool, who, yeah, I mean, him, uh, a lot of other Brazilians have ridiculously white teeth. And uh, there's something about that that it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Like, Jurgen Klopp has even gotten in on the act as well. Uh it's something about that Brazilian dental insurance, man. It's like, I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> they're obsessed. They're obsessed with just ridiculously white teeth. But anyway, uh, need, if you have any I thoughts on that, then, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just uh, I hope that uh, that dentist is on my insurance. I'll have to look. Seriously. Um, <laughs> that training top is interesting, though. Um, and if it is what it looks like from this angle, I take my money, please. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looks pretty dope. Uh, there's apparently a red version with black stripes on uh, Adidas right now, or the MLS store, whatever. But um, mm -hmm. we're not uh, we're not <laughs> we're not pr promoting their uh, their stuff. <laughs> so you know, find it wherever yeah. you can. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it anyway, cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from that, uh, Miles Robinson, George Bellow, and Brooks Lennon have made the 48-man preliminary squad for the U.S. Men's National U23s. Congratulations to them. They are getting ahead, uh, getting in ahead of the Olympic qualifiers. And uh, this is Lennon's maybe, uh, you know, if he can make the team, it would be his first appearance for the national team since 2019. But, of course, Robinson and Bello played last month and against TNT, of course, and uh, Robinson did score. They both uh, were able to make appearances. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Brooks Lennon definitely has an outside shot. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think he was definitely one of our most consistent players last year, so I think this is still deserved. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, like, I... Just a word on Lennon, like, you know, if you were familiar, if you watched this through uh, last season, uh, you know, I was very complimentary about his play. And I think that uh, for the most part, he can effectively replace Gressel. Um, so I, you know, yeah, I'm happy to see him get a look with the U23s. I think uh, the U23s is interesting what's happening because so they haven't made this is the Olympic tournament and they the men have not made the Olympic tournament since 2008, I think. And so I think there's a lot of motivation to actually, you know, qualify through. And it's tough, you know, because there, there's only so many CONCACAF teams. I want to say it's like two spots, but, you know, they have to go up against Mexico and Costa Rica, of course. And so, um, you know, for whoever makes the team from Atlanta United, if they if they do make the team, and I think there's a good chance because uh, the players in Europe are probably not going to get released for the uh, Olympic tournament, and certainly not the Olympic qualifying tournament, not the, not during the business end of the season in Europe. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is an opportunity, I think, for domestic players to show their stuff. And so if Miles Robinson and Bello um, get called up to the team and you would figure that at least Bello uh, would be a favorite, um, it's an interesting opportunity. You know, it's like it's just a way to get more exposure for these players, which it, mm -hmm. Atlanta United will always benefit from that in the long run. Oh, so. for sure. Drive up those transfer fees, of course, because eventually... Yeah. These players are going to be sold, as we all know. Uh, well, if you don't know, now you know. But uh, <laughs> Maybe not Lennon, but uh, the other yeah, two, yeah. I think, certainly are in play for a bigger move eventually. Exactly. And so, uh, anyway, let's move on from that. And some squad numbers have been revealed. Santiago Sosa takes number five. Ronald Hernandez takes number two. Of course, both of those previously belonged to Eric Rometty and our Franco Escobar, uh, respectively. And Lissandro Lopez, or Licha Lopez, as the people are reminding me in the comments constantly, will wear number 15, of course, previously worn by Manuel Castro and, of course, Tito Vichalba. So, you know, interesting number kind of 
uh, revolving door a little bit, which, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely some of those numbers hold some uh, near and dear sentiments to some fans. So, you know, it is one of those. But um, let's move on to the incoming goalkeeper that has not been announced. Rocco Rios Novo uh, has posted a lot or has been posted about playing Call of Duty with Ezekiel Barco and Eric Lopez. But, yeah, we're still waiting on that announcement where he probably <laughs> is going to join the twos. But, uh, yeah, okay, you know, you know, we can just uh, play a coy here and uh, just pretend like he's not just chilling with the whole team. And, you know, right. <laughs> but, yeah. oh, well, you know, we're just pretending. I mean, like you, you, what are you going to do, stop young men from playing video games? You know exactly. what I'm saying? It's, just, yeah. it's, it's so funny, though. It's just like the world we live in now. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, uh whatever i mean you know, <laughs> novo yeah. like he's essentially he's an la united player for all intents and right. purposes but <laughs> i wonder if he'll make any uh game day rosters this season that'll be interesting because you mentioned like the whole two goalkeeper thing if one of them become unavailable what happens so right um but you got to figure he's gonna come in and play for twos but it'll yeah. just be interesting to see if he makes any first team appearances Right. And uh, yeah, we do need to note that, yes, he is uh, uh, an American citizen, or I believe he's a dual citizen of both Argentina and the United States. And so, uh, you know, he wouldn't take up an international spot if it were, if it, you know, any of that. So, you know, there is a flexibility type of thing if he does show out at the twos. So, uh, last bit of news. Uh, unfortunately, Franco Escobar has suffered a uh, broken foot with Newell's Old Boys already, and he'll need surgery, and it'll take place over the next few days. And so, he will be out for about three months or about 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, that's kind of the average recovery time, according to Newell's. And so, definitely hate to see that. Uh, he just got there on loan, and so uh, definitely Escobar, please get well soon. Uh, and of course, yeah, there is the possibility that he could come back on, uh, you know, after his loan too, because I mean, yeah, the uh, the season might be near the end for Newell's old boys when he returns, and so there's not very much he could do about that in terms of showing out, even though they again know his quality. Uh, so anyway, let's. Uh, wrap this baby up and get to our question of the day. And so our question of the day is, which of the new players are you most excited about? There's about eight new players in the squad. Uh, the likes of Santiago Sosa, Franco Ibarra, Alicia Lopez. I mean, there's a lot of players that have come in. Who are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments below. But guys, that does it for the show. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. For Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.